Hi, I'm Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you around the handover on this Adria Coral S580 ST. On the passenger side of the vehicle, the first thing you want to do if you want to charge a vehicle or you arrive at site is hook the vehicle up. So you've got your hook up lead, if you lift the collar, lift the flap just beside the rear passenger wheel, slide on. And then when unhooking, there's a small blue lever here that you push down to pull the hook lead off. At the back you've got your toilet, so your toilet's in there, this is where all your business ends up. So as long as the slide on the bottom of the ball of the toilet is closed, you'll be able to lift the orange handle and pull the cassette out. You've then got wheels so you can drag it around the site when it's full, as it may be heavy, instead of carrying it. And then empty, go to your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your toilet block. Take the cap off. Press this button here and empty it out. Once you have emptied it out, there's normally a tap, put some water in, give it another rinse and empty again. Should you be using the liquid, cap full, straight into here, or if you're using the tablets, put about a pint of water into the cassette and then push it back into the vehicle. And then you can drop a tablet, which is in a cellophane, just like a dishwasher tablet, but the um, Pacific Feffered um, tablets, drop one straight down the toilet and it'll end up in the cassette and break down the liquid. And we'll clear it down the vehicle. So this is your fresh water intake, so it opens with the small key, which we can lock and unlock this. Put a hose pipe in there until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel. If you are going wild camping, you will have to take a full tank of water with you, but if you are going to a site, tend to take a maximum of 20 litres, as this is, it'll give you the option to stop off, use the toilet, have a cup of tea, but it won't um, it won't take as much fuel for consumption. It'll actually mean you're a lighter weight, so you, f you should be you should be getting the better miles per gallon. And in here, this is just a 12 volt um, supply for a submersible pump. So you put your two pins in here, your submersible pump and your aqua roller bucket in the other end into here, and it'll suck the water out of the bucket of, or aqua roll into your fresh water if you can't get near water. But if you can, just use a hose pipe, it's far easier. And then coming down to the passenger door, so this is where you fill your diesel, so it opens with the main ignition key, and then you can fill the vehicle with fuel. And on the inside of the slam panel of the passenger door, you put your tyre pressures. So it's five bar on the front, which is five and a half bar on the back, which is 72.3 on the front and 79.5 on the rear. Underneath your passenger seat, you have a tool kit, so this lifts out. And this will give you a jackknife brace, a tow knife, and a screwdriver. So should you need to change your wheel or be towed away, all your tools for that are in there. And then underneath the floor, so underneath this um, flap here, so this compartment, is where your engine battery lives. So if you ever need to change the engine battery and lift it out, that this is where you do so. But you can give a jump start and access jumping points underneath the bonnet, which your bonnet release is on the side of the passenger dashboard. So now underneath your bonnet, you've got your weight plate, so it's a three and a half ton, so always go off the Adria one, because this is a phase two conversion. So it's three and a half ton. If you were to put a tow bar on and to tow with this vehicle, you can tow a train weight that doesn't exceed 5.5, so this is whatever you're towing and the motorhome. Then you've got your front and back axle weight and your chassis number. You've got your paint coat here for the silver cab. You've got your radiator fluid, power steering fluid, screen wash is the main one you're gonna need, which is located in the corner here. Brake fluid, oil filler, oil dipsticks for checking levels. And then should you need a give or receive a jump start, you've got your earth here. So this was where your black clip would go, or to put a charger on, and your Positive is under here, so your red clip would go on here for giving or receiving a jump start or putting a charge on in the winter time. In here is your gas locker, so LPG liquid petroleum gas. So if you open that with this key, and there you can get two 
six kilogram gas bottles in there. So when you are have put the bottle in there, if you do tie it in, because this is better when in transit that the bottle is stable and won't move, to tie it in and then do. Put the pigtail onto the bottle so it's just a left hand thread. So the opposite thread to a normal thread, so left hand thread, hand tighten, then turn on at the top of the bottle. One full turn at the top should be sufficient. So that then if there was any incident with gas, it's far easier to turn off with just one turn off instead of several times. And then do make sure it is turned off when you travel. You've got your fridge vents there, your own and light, your heater exhaust. So this just brings out the nasties of this from the heater. So just make sure that's not um, blocked and is obstruction free. And then should you put your key in here and open, you can press. And then you've got storage underneath your bed and your boilers underneath there, which I'll show you from inside. Here are some shelves, these will just drop down to give you storage and it is got a plug in the bottom and it is heated and there's a light here so should any wetness get in here you can wash it out and just push it down the plug hole. To the rear of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light with your reverse camera underneath, your bike rack which is a three bike rack so lift the arms, pull this down, you'll then be able to put the wheels on the channels, put these through the spokes and tie them down and then you've got these for the crossbars so first bike, second bike and third bike. And then at the back you do have your silver parking centers. And behind the driver's side rear wheel you do have corner steady so if you put this up winding handle in and wind your legs down this just gives a bit more stability to the van your wastewater is located behind the passenger rear wheel so you'd normally drive over a grid and then turn the handle and this will allow all your wastewater to be emptied you don't want to travel with the wastewater so once you've finished your holiday drive over the motorhome service bay and deposit your waste in, in the grid or hole in the ground. So to operate your control panel, so first of all you'll see the icon that we are, we have mains hook up on board and we are receiving 240 volts. So to turn the panel on, press on and then it is telling you the voltage of your leisure battery. If you click that again, it will tell you the voltage and it will also tell you the voltage of the vehicle battery which is 13 volts. When turning on, if you are hooked up you'll get 240 volts, if not you'll just get 12 off your leisure battery. And then coming to here you've got your pump which you'll need to have on to surface your tap, toilet, shower and hand basin tap. You'll hear the, the pump kicking in there, it's just pressurising until it will cut out and then it will cut in when you open the tap. And then if you click here, it shows you your fresh water level. So 100% of water on board. Zero waste, as it would indicate here, if we had any waste on board. Located underneath the rear traveling seats is where your onboard fresh water tank is. So to drain it off, there isn't a tap outside, you've got to come in, loosen the nut on the tank and then inside in the corner there, you'll see that little drain and you've got to lift that plug up and it'll drain the water underneath the chassis. So in the winter time, it's crucial that you don't leave any water on board, so no waste or fresh or any in the boiler, which I'll show you further on in the video. But you must drain it down as especially on board if this 
water was to be left in, it was to freeze and it was to crack the tank because it's just plastic, it would flood the van and you don't want that to happen. Located underneath the side facing bench seat near the habitation door you've got your mains leisure battery which is a 75 amp battery you've got your fuses for the battery some more fuses and the main on your mega block is all your fuses for your um, various items on the van so your awning light, your heater, your, your water pump, your lights all your 12 volt items so it would be a good idea to go and get some spare blade fuses carry them with you and then if any fuse does blow you can just take them out and replenish the fuse that's broken so to operate your Dometic fridge and freezer so if you press here until it turns on you've then got three main sources so if you press the other end of the same button you've got 230 volt which is on mains hookup so when you've got the hookup in the side of the van you'll not and you're on site or you're at home and you're pre chilling the fridge if you just put on a mains electric which is 230 volt this will work exactly like a household fridge but if you weren't near hookup and you are wild camping you'd have to go on a gas which you'll be using off your main gas bottle so this will cool the fridge on gas and then when you travel if you put on a 12 volt so the idea here is to pre chill the fridge before you go away so if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you're lucky enough to have a storage yard with mains hook up if you hook the van up the day before you go away fill it with your shop and allow it to cool overnight and then when you do start traveling if you put on a 12 volt it'll keep this temperature the same it won't increase the temperature it'll keep it the same and it basically acts as a cool box and keeps your shopping fresh but then you can go to EAS which is an automatic election electric selection and what this does is it'll find its own source so should I be on that and I take the hook up now out now of the vehicle it'll switch over to gas should I start the engine it'll switch over to 12 volt but these fridges are programmed to wait 20 minutes before um, igniting on gas on EAS which is your automatic election selection before because the last thing you want is for it to spark and ignite in a fuel station because you don't want that so it waits 20 minutes so it should it be on automatic just put on a manual it would light it on gas should you need to you've got your temperature here so from one to the big snowflake being colder and then this here this button just allows a bit of heat around the rubbers to stop the rubber on the freezer from sticking and then one part of winterization process if you clean the fridge out so you've cleaned it you may get a fridge air freshener to stop any smells but the the thing you don't want to do is once you've cleaned it is shut the door because if you shut the door you're trapping the air in and then there's no ventilation so on both the fridge and the freezer if you push and slide this along this is it the, the, you're pushing the tabs out so then when you shut the door it won't shut but it'll still allow ventilation so fresh air in and fresh air out so in your cooker in your kitchen you on your hob you've got two gas three gas rings so one two and three on the gas so should you have had this on for any length of time allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down and then below you do have your oven and your grill so take the oven shelves out and grill pan out when traveling or wrap them up as this is where you get most of the rattles from We've got storage under there storage in here and your pumps lives under there so it's underneath the flap that you put in there that's where your pump is so that's where you'll get your noise when you open the tap got your cutlery drawer another storage drawer 
and a big ass drawer straw and underneath here you have a mains 3 pin 240 socket we've got two lights here one will do the lights in the kitchen and one will do the extractor fan storage small bin there when you're using the kitchen for your waste this is for your wine glasses and wine bottles and then you operate the windows you pinch slide up and clip this is your and clip together this is your blackout or you can pinch together and that is your fly screen and your windows just push out so lift the levers push out clip out it stays out push it all the way to bring it back in make sure they are shut when traveling and securely fastened the same as your skylights in your wardrobe you have your main mcb board with all your rcbs on so you can so you can test your trip or you can if something has tripped hairdryer toaster kettle has tripped the fan out you can try here first before you try on the main site and then you do have your aerial so when traveling make sure it is securely fastened into the van and pulled all the way down but then when you're on site and you want to get a better tv, TV signal you can push the aerial up and then you've got your max view booster here so should you not be getting a signal or should you be getting a too strong of a signal you can turn this and this will either minimize or maximize your strength for the TV. Now in your bathroom, so if you press the big blue button on the back of the toilet, you'll get the flush should the pump be on. It will flush like so. And then you've got a cassette which is known as the slide or the trap door. If you slide that to the right it deposits in the cassette. So should this be open, you'll not get the cassette out the exterior of the vehicle. It must be shut to get the cassette out to change it. And then it will indicate on the diagram here, it will go red, the wheel, which indicates the cassette is full and needs changed and replenished with chemical. Got storage. Sliding under here so there's more toilet space. And you pinch them and make sure they're unlocked you've got a, a, a skylight for ventilation and you can lock it shut you pinch them you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind another thing when winterizing if you do take your shower head off the shower hose and allow the shower hose to lie in the shower tray and make sure that every tap within the van so kitchen tap bathroom tap shower tap is left in the open position of the mixer this stops any air building up and allow and it stops an airlock from forming and it'll operate your light you just turn it on and off here so underneath your french bed this here this little fella is your winter drain tap so it's an automatic frost control tap so once it gets to three degrees it should automatically drop the 10 liters of water in the boiler but i wouldn't rely on it so when you do come to stop using the vehicle and put it away for the winter or should you be leaving it standing for a week or so and it's going to be frosty weather if you just turn the top here it'll pop the button out and you'll hear the water you'll hear the water kick in and it'll be automatically draining from underneath the van I would leave it in that position the whole time that you are winterizing and then when you do come to reuse the van if you put it into this position that we'll have it in now so across the vehicle push the small blue button in at the bottom you will then be able to fill the vehicle with water come in put the pump on put your taps to cold you'll automatically get cold water put it to hot it'll cough split it'll make all sorts of noises and what that's doing is it's drawn 
the fresh water from the tank to the boiler and it's priming the boiler and spitting any air that the boiler has formed out your taps until you get a steady flow on the kitchen tap then you go to the bathroom and the shower and so on but it is very important that you do winterize the vehicle as it's not covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to do the winterization procedure also you'll have your gas taps here so any problems with gas we always recommend you turn it off at the top of the bottle but should you have a problem and you're away and you still want to enjoy your holiday you can't isolate each appliance but these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced just to make sure your gas appliances are still in safe for use and you've got your storage underneath your bed there so all your carpets are underneath there so in the bedroom is where you'll find your Truma Combi E heating controls so at the top you've got your energy sources so you've got two wavy lines which is two kilowatts of electric so should you be on site this would be how you'd heat your water and the van should you not be in a rush You've got one kilowatt, which is one wiggly line, should you be hooked up. This is, you'd normally have to use this on smaller sites, so CL sites or sites abroad. You've got the gas flame on its own, which is, if you are well camping and you weren't hooked up, you'd be ra relying on gas to heat your water and your van. You've got gas and one kilowatt of electric, or you've got gas and two kilowatts of electric, which a lot of people use in the winter to heat the van or should you be in a rush for a shower or hot water you can put that on for 20 minutes and you should have sufficient 10 litres of hot water and then below it's what if you were it's whether you want the hot water on on its own you want the heating on on its own or what temperature you want the water on so at the top you've got the heating the water at 60 degrees so once it hits the designated temperature in the boiler of 60 degrees it will cut out until the water gets cooler and it will kick back in to heat the water back to 60 degrees you've got the same but you've got it at 40 degrees you've got off in the middle you've got the gas flame on its own which is a heating on its own so should you be away in the van but you don't have any water on board and you want to heat the van up you can just put it on the gas flame here and then you would choose choose your energy source or if you wanted hot water and heating together you've got hot water at 60 degrees and you're heating and then you've got a thermostat here to this is more for where the heating of the van so you can choose your temperature of the actual van temperature to lock your habitation door if you you see this tab here push it down and that's locked and then as soon as you go for the door it opens so in your cab you've got your handbrake to your right of the driver you've got your electric windows and electric mirrors which does the top and the blind spot which is just a joystick so you just turn it to the mirror you require got your headlight adjustment and your mode which will go in here and change the time and the date and things you've got your blinds on the driver's window and passenger so you'd slide this forward lift it up and then this just attaches so just pull this back and you'll see two magnets and that just attaches to the door like so and then you have the two on the windscreen so if you pinch these and slide it out it will clip behind the mirror and they are just magnetic so if it's going to be a windy blustery night put a hairband or elastic band around here to stop it from um, pinging open you've got your lights and indicators on there your wipers and your trip computer on here which will go through this screen here and it'll tell you your range so it's saying it's 156 mile in the tank it's doing 23.1 miles per gallon top speed is 30 miles an hour and the time six speed manual gearbox cruise control on here so to lift in the reverse lift the collar and you'll hear the sensors beep in there but you've also got the rear view camera and the red outlines your bumpers and so on this glove box is lockable and you've got a good storage space in there locks the cab doors on an evening hazard lights rear fogs and heated mirrors 
two 12 volt, one being the bigger 180 watt output. Temperature on the outside ring, fan speed on the in, and it must be on at least one or more for the fan speed to, for the aircon to work, sorry. Temperature distribution, so this is where you want the fan air to go. And then you have your either bringing fresh air in or recirculating the air. Got your Pioneer head unit. It's got the turn on. Just press there. You can scroll through your radio channels here. So I'll do it. I'll find them. And then once you're happy, you can press one, two, three, four, five, six to save them. CD in there. So your CD there. And then it will check the re the head unit front. You just press here. This box is heated and cooled by your air conditioning, so should you have any chocolate sweets or little bits and pieces for on the road, especially when the air con's on, this is a great place to put them instead of getting back up and forth to the fridge. And with your carb lights here, your visors, which someone has handily put your height, length, width, and your tyre pressures on there. Above, so on the motorhome, you've got these little toggle switches here, which do your light and some storage. Some more storage up here. And behind these cupboards, you get a bit of storage as well. To turn your seats located on both passenger and driver, you've got these two arms here. So if you pull it, and slide it round. If it does get caught on the door or the B pillar, if you just pull your driving position forward and it should swing into the habitation area.